god of strife, is dead. Destroyed in his attack on Tantris, and Midnight and her allies have recovered the first Tablet of Fate. One of a pair of artifacts will return the gods to their former glory and save the realms from the fallen deity's wrath. To complete their quest, though, the heroes must travel across the world to Waterdeep, the City of Splendors, and even pass into the Realm of the Dead. But both Cyric and Miracle, God of Death, want the Tablets of Fate for their own dark ends, and they will stop at nothing to capture Midnight, even if it means the destruction of the realms. Hello and welcome to Liam's Lyceum. I am your host, Liam, aka Himvar, and today I'll be doing a spoiler-free review of Troy Denning's Waterdeep. Waterdeep is book three of the Avatar series and came out in 1989 like the first two books. But unlike the first two books, this one is written by Troy Denning rather than Scott Siensen. This is also the last of the original trilogy, wrapping up the events of the previous books. If you find an original copy, it'll have the pen name Richard Allinson on the cover, but if you find the reprints, it will say Troy Denning. Denning's writing is very similar to Siensen's and the characters have a very similar feel though it feels a bit more grounded and there are better character descriptions and they're slightly more detailed. I don't know if I need to say this specifically, but this will contain spoilers for books one and two, which are Shadowdale and Tantris, which I do have reviews up for already if you wanna go watch those. I'll keep this rather short as there's not much to say. The party starts in Cormir, though in the last book we left them off in Tantris. And so they go from Cormir all the way to Waterdeep, and I won't spoil exactly where they go in each stop, but we do have some pretty interesting new characters here. We have Dalzell, who is a member of the Zentalar, who is mostly with Cyric, and he is probably one of the better characters, along with Sneakabout, who is a halfling, who has lost his cursed sword. And then we have a couple of other interesting things. We get some good looks at the dead, some ruins, well, several ruins, actually, and just how the spirits of the dead work, especially with the god of death in the realms and not in the realm of the dead. Me, this was a much better book, just like I, how I enjoyed Shadowdale and I enjoyed Tantris more than Shadowdale, Waterdeep is better than the previous two books. And I'm not sure how much that has to do with the plot developments, and the character developments, and how much it has to do with Denning's writing and his, his taking the hand and the role of of those developments because I will say that the character development here is very good like it was in book two. Kelimvor, Cyric, and Midnight, and Adon all have great arcs. Stuff I was not expecting and stuff I was kind of clueless on because if you're somewhat familiar with Forgotten Realms lore already then you kind of already know some of these uh, shifts in the cosmology about who loses their godhood, who becomes gods. And so I already knew some of that stuff, but I, I didn't know exactly where all these characters ended up. And I was very satisfied with the end of this book. I was very satisfied with the end of this trilogy, and I would feel comfortable ending it here. But in fact, I enjoyed it so much though that I wanted to continue. And there are two other books, Prince of Lies and Crucible, The Trials of Cyric the Mad. And so I will say this also has some good Good stuff in it. Mostly we have Miracle, who remains mostly in the background for the first half, um, while Baal, god of murder, or Bahal as they call him, replaced Bane in chasing the party. Though Miracle is a better villain, and so is Bahal than Bane. Now, Bane is no longer here. If you've read Tantris, he died at the end fighting Torm. And then when we add Cyric into the mix of Bahal and Miracle, this is just better villains this time around and that really makes the story better because Bane was just kind of a clown to be honest he wasn't very good and then we also have a sort of vampiric sentient weapon that doesn't actually get a name in this book but it does get a name in the next book and that's a very interesting um, that's a very interesting part to the tale it's it's evil it's kind of creepy it actually was really creeping me out when they first introduced it but overall, everyone's arc in this book is great. The heroes are in more peril than ever, and several times I was afraid they might not make it, considering I didn't actually know what the fate of some of them were. And you'll have to see if they all do. Adam is probably my favorite in this book, and he's just one of my favorites overall anyways. Though Cyric really comes into his role of being an evil and almost mad person. And 
though I don't like him so much as a person anymore, I still think his character is rather well-developed. And while Midnight and Kellen Vore still have their relationship, I think it's a little odd still, but it, it works, I suppose. And then I also enjoyed Midnight, though, more overall, as written by Denning more than Cien since Midnight. I just felt like she worked a little better and maybe it was just Denning is better at writing female characters. And I'll say the story wraps up very nicely. This was, like I said, originally the end of the series, so it'll be interesting to see, for me, how the next two books go. Though in reality, I've already read the fourth one and I will be reviewing that shortly. And then we also have some good philosophy here uh, some co- very quotable moments that i i didn't write down because i listened to this but some very good stuff but anyways liam williams lyceum i'll catch you next time